package from China. Welcome to the Wicked Gamer and Collector. Welcome back to the YouTube channel. So in this video, we are going to talk about the Mio Max or in other words, the Pocket Go. There were quite some YouTubers did a review about and I wanted to check it out for myself because I was pretty excited about it. So the previous model was, well, it was a, a funny little device. But this thing is indeed a Mio Max simply because this thing is quite huge. It comes in this nice collectible box. If you look at the first generation of portable system when I just started this YouTube channel, most of the time there were just flimsy boxes, but nowadays we're having this very nice collectible boxes. So let's take a close look at the box itself because there's quite some information on it. So this thing has a 2000 milliamp rechargeable lithium battery that gives you five to six hours of playtime. We're having an EPS screen and three and a half inch show. It's not the biggest that we have seen because I already reviewed five inch and seven inches of portable systems. Let's see, we're having a support for external memory card or micro SD card, CF card, and we have quite some support for systems because this thing has, yes, open dingooks. Right, let's open it up and let's see what we're going to get. I'm always forgetting this thing to put it back in because I already checked it, of course. Um, let's see what are we going to get the device itself. Here, we'll take a closer look at it later. Ooh, nice. Right, let's see. It comes with a card reader or a USB 2.0 card reader. Yeah, I must say, not very convenient. Simply because we're having 3.0 nowadays and we're having the Type C. So there's always more like the question: what cable of USB are we going to get? Alright, so let's clean up this thing. Let's clean up this mess and let's let's review this thing. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is remove the screen protector. I'm always leaving these things on. I don't know why that is, but. Alright, mm. right, so the first thing that I'm noticing with this device, it weighs quite heavy. In the previous model, it was more like this flimsy plastic piece of hardware, but nowadays, mm, it feels quite heavy. And we need to do the smell test. Mm, no chemical plastic. A little bit disappointed, but that is a very good thing that they're using non-chemical plastic. Alright, so what are we going to get? We're having the ABXY, we have a menu button, select start. We have an analog stick, not the biggest fan of this analog stick kind, uh, more like the, let's say, the more premium analog sticks. Nah, it's more like, you can compare this with the PSP, for example. All right, the D-pad, and this is a funny thing. If you move in right like this, it feels quite flimsy, but in general, it's not bad at all. All right, so at the bottom, this is something that is very unique. I have never seen this before, we having two micro SD slots. Yeah. We have two of them, that is pretty unique. All right, let's take a close look at it. Well, we have more, I already turn it on, or it seems to be. Turn it off, turn it off, turn it off. Yes, all right. We have four shoulder buttons, so that is very unique. We've got a very nice touch. All right, we have here, I'm guessing this is the volume control, AV out, type C for charging and data transfer, but I really hate about it. It's always more like a question, do they have HDMI output? That is very rare nowadays on these Chinese devices. Keep in mind, this is more like, I would not say the premium or it's not also not a budget. These things go around, let's say $60. So HDMI is something, it's, it's on it. It's not, it's, it's always a little bit of a guess. On and off switch, here at the back we can find the battery. It's a quite a huge battery. I already pulled it up. Come out. Well, let's take a close look inside. As you can see here, there's nothing much to see. All right, the complex of the battery. Uh, the type of battery, the BM20. Uh, to be honest, this is the first time that I am personally seeing this battery. So most of the time they are using these common batteries. So I don't know if you look it up on AliExpress how expensive it will be, but most of the time these batteries are pretty affordable if you want to replace them. But if you can find a bigger one, that is the question. I can not answer all right let's put it back together and now we are going to power it on oh it's already powered on <sighs> we're going to do that part over all right let's power it on there was there was something that i did notice 
that this Max is lighting up. I don't even can see it on the camera because it's daylight now, but that's really funny. All right, so the menu itself is pretty common. It's the even the same skin. If you're, let's say, if you're not familiar with the product, this is Open Dingux. And what you can do with it, you're having, let's say, emulators, and you can remove and add new emulators. A big community behind it, very nice, and it gives you a little bit more of a freedom compared with, let's say, the Chinese knockoff systems and all the other stuff that has, let's say, the Chinese software on it. And I mean with Chinese software, that is basically you having the software that you're stuck with emulators. So if it's crap, it's just basically crap and you're stuck with it. But here we can just swap everything out like emulators. But it's also very cool. We having, let's say, homebrew games. So the community make their own homebrew games or just port stuff from back at the nine. Let's go back at the day from the 80s and 90s. We're having Quake, uh, Duke Nukem 3D. And I think that is really appealing personally to me that this have the option. Even with the Mario Kart Remix, never seen it before. Right in the settings, we can just change something out. It seems to be this thing has a wireless connection network, so we can hook it up to the internet. So let's see. Let's power it on. Save networks. So that is also very unique. I have never seen this before. So there are a lot of quite of new options out there with the new portable devices. So for example, the let's say the first Pocket Go didn't have all these fancy things. All right, so this is what you're going to get some more apps, for example, Input Tester, if you're interested in this. All right, I think it's ready. Let's try some games and let's see how they're running, because I'm very curious. There is only one speaker, but how good is this? Let's find out. Before we're going to play, I just wanted to show you what you can see here, is that the view angle is indeed an EPS screen. It looks very nice. Very good. And I like it. Go away. Don't think so. It plays smooth, it runs smooth, and the D pad itself is a really nice for these games. Nice. And as you can see with the scum emulator, you can even summon the keyboard. She said she'd fix my bus, she'd have strings attached, things are never that simple. And by pressing start, you can go to the launcher. You can move the cursor with the D-pad and the analog stick. Let's play some Super NES.
So I did notice a lot of sound volume differences between the games. Alright, let's play some Game Boy Classic. Sounds good, sounds good. Play this game with the pad. Very curious how this is going to work. Alright, I do should move. And you're right. And I get a move. But the other option. D pad is perfect. Perfect for fighting games. Alright, so let's try PlayStation. As you can see, I did give the option for showing the FPS because I wanted to show you how this is running and how many of the CPU it's consuming. Alright, let's power it on. It's always a question which button do I need to press? Yeah, that's not the button I needed to press. Alright. Alright, let's see how fast the loading times are. So we're only on 60 frames, so far so good, but of course it's only the selection menu. Let's see if this 3D fighting game can be rendered on this Wild new mix. Nope. Tiger. Tiger. Oh, this is really loud. Tiger. It's playable, it's running between 50 and 55 FPS, but if you want to play PlayStation, no, I cannot recommend this. Look at the CPU, it's using the CPU 100%. The D-pad is nice. The D-pad is working perfectly. Alright, so let's try a homebrew game and what you can see with Quake 2, it runs a little bit better on the Mio Max compared with the previous model, the Mio. Or better said, the Pocket Go. So Quake 2, if you want to play homebrew games and you just want to have this more extra juice, the Mio Max will bring you this extra performance with the homebrew games. Let's see how it runs on this device. Let's see how it loads up. Does it still have this little stuttering? Louis? Well, when in a game like this, because you need to move around the battlefield. Oh, yeah. Well, 
What I already told you before, when you're moving the D-pad all around, I have this clicky feeling in it. It's not bad when playing the game, but it's more like a very horrible sound if you listen to it. But it doesn't affect the gameplay in general. Alright, so this is what we're going to get with the Mio Max. So, I'm a little bit disappointed in emulation if you look at the PlayStation 1. I was hoping the Mio Max could handle the PlayStation 3 dimensional games on 60 frames without any hassle. But, it still has a little bit of power missing. Yeah, because the Retro Game 350 can handle the PlayStation 1 pretty well. If you look at the homebrew games, we're having more power so we can play more games. Quake 2 is running way better than in the previous model. And the screen is also again way better. Let me know what you think of this, but I thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit the little bell and become one of the Wicked family. And it would be great if you hit the bell, subscribe, because that means I will see you in my next video.